Hi guys! Hello, Mary Beats, everybody. It's Michelle Marie Tony. It's Columbus Day, 2019, October 14th. And, uh, I thought with today we would go to McDonald's and get something to eat for breakfast. And we'll talk about things as we go along. And this is a vlog, this is not a live stream. I can focus on where I'm going, which is always a good idea. Right now it's over gas 3 a.m. It's a little chilly. It's, it's not really too bad, but yeah. Yeah, it gets pretty, uh, I try not to make you feel like a milkshake. <laughs> you don't want to say about that way, milkshake. All right. Anyway, so the point is, uh, why do I go to McDonald's? Uh, it's a question that keeps coming up. Well, I don't have a car, so, uh, if I want to go, I would need. I have to walk everywhere. So, we all know McDonald's food isn't really that good for you, but, well, it's food, okay? Um... Now, if I was to go ahead and get food delivered to my home and did the equivalent of try to eat healthy, but I didn't physically move around, that would create a situation that's not much better than going to McDonald's, which is you're putting in all those calories, but you're not expending any calories. So, that's where... It's nice so I can go to McDonald's and I can go out and eat once in a while instead of uh, just sitting home bored out of my skull. I also want to check out the construction on the uh, on the new um, uh, convenience store that's opening up soon by C by CVS. Now I actually. I've been watching the construction pretty intently from this year. It's been taking a long time to build the store. Now, every one time I showed you guys about this, about these new touch don't walk signs. Wait. Wait. Wait, wait. And because there's no wait, wait. physical tact, tactile touch, you never know. In the UK, there's a little nodule underneath, by the way, that you can use to tell when the light changes. You'll start to feel it rotate or vibrate. We used to have a horn in the intersection. And, uh, well, we don't have that anymore. So... I figured I'd show you that at the same time, but, uh, the one thing that irritates the hell out of me. Soon it's gonna be winter time, soon I'm gonna have to start getting my jacket out of the closet. I mean, I guess it's only about 7 degrees out here. So it's a little bit nippy, even for me, because I still got my summer blood. Um, alright, now it's good. See? No, because I had no beep, no horn, no nothing. I had no idea that it was safe to cross. Okay. So. That's really the major crosswalk I gotta cross. It's not the only one, but it's one of them. Now, because the soup kitchen is not open today, because it's Columbus Day. Uh, so normally I would go the soup kitchen. This is actually a little bit earlier in the morning. I'm actually, it's 7.22. It's, uh, it's a little early than I normally get up, but I slept for about six to eight hours sleep, and then I got up. By the way, I also mentioned, uh, and Laura Thrasson about the dark circles under his eyes. And I thought I would talk about what causes that, because I have the same condition. 
Well, let's chill the lack of sleep. Can closet. It's not specifically lack of sleep. Okay. Lack of sleep is not the only cause. The skin that runs underneath your eyelids is very thin, and so the blood vessels are very noticeable. Then I, I watched a video by a dermatologist this morning explaining it. There is medical procedures that can be done to minimize dark circles under the eyes. But the causes of them are caused by many factors. It's not just one or the other. It's a lot of things. So, you might want to be aware of that. Oh, by the way, how's my leg feeling today? My leg, my left leg is feeling fine. Uh, that's another reason I went out. See, that's another thing that kind of kept me in the house a lot was my leg my leg pain and uh and you can see the if you can't you can see how I walk uh they uh it's kind of wibbly wobbly <laughs> that's just the way I move um not much I can do about it remember I don't have a car so well, we're coming up to the new convenience store uh, I can see it looks like they are starting to prepare things on the convenience store and I also noticed as it looks like this convenience store for communication services has chosen to go with fiber Lucky shit. I think this is a fiber cable right here. Usually, if the wire's orange, uh, it's generally a fiber optic cable. This is the power lines. So let's take a look and see what we can see in the store. You can see that they're painting the, the signs. And there, they got the gas island up. I was a little bit wrong with the layout of the gas island originally. They got some people working on there now. Probably people doing the finished carpentry and stuff. So I'm not going to go in there. I don't want to get into trouble. I just to say is it looks like they're starting to prepare the store for the... It's a pretty big building. Um... It's certainly bigger than uh, the other stores. You can see the interior lights are they put some lighting on the inside now the store. The temporary power box uh, set up by the contractor is gone. And it looks really nice. Um, inside there, it, it, it looks pretty promising. So, I'm really looking forward to the uh, see how this compares to Cumberland Farms. I've been a Cumberland Farms eater for a long time, and uh, so I'm just curious to see how it's gonna fare compared to Cumberland Farms. Because it's breakfast, you can imagine a lot of people are getting up now. Right now it's pretty quiet. That's great, because that means... For me, I'm going to have less trouble... Uh, getting a meal and stuff like that. So what all kind of stuff do I buy here at, at McDonald's? Well... Normally... In breakfast, I just usually get two sausage and cheese McMuffins. Usually they're two for four, so I figure if they still have that deal, I'll go to those. Gonna watch my budget for the next few months. And, uh, so. Um. 
And then you can hear the birds chirping. My fingers are getting cold. So, I think what I'll do is I'll make this a two. I'll make this a couple part video. So I'm not gonna upload this segment right in a second. This is my usual table I sit at. Ooh. So I'm here. So I'm gonna show you my homemade stand. That makes it easier for doing videos. Just get a squeeze in place here. Oh, it's going to do this one handed. This is not really a one handed. And then the phone just goes in that stand. And then it's adjustable. You can pivot it to different positions and things like that. So it's something I had built for a long time and it worked out fine. So, let me go get some grub, and then, um, after I eat something, we'll go ahead and we'll continue on with this morning's Columbus Day live stream, or vlog in this case, it's not a live stream. So, we'll see you in a little bit. Okay. Now, uh, this is, um, uh, it's a fairly normal day. I said it's just it's um, Columbus, Day. so as I said, soup kitchen's not open. So I had to eat somewhere. Last night I had some uh, barbecued pork that the soup kitchen gave us that was still frozen. It was kind of making the oven, and um, it was really spicy. I it was supposed to be mild, but trust me, it wasn't. Um, so I, um, I had that for dinner, and um, in some in some French fries, but that was all I had. Tonight I've got a frozen uh If I'm in the mood, I don't know. Am I in the mood? I have no idea. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these in the video and the walking video and I'm going to combine them together and I'm going to upload them as one video. I guess you can see it's kind of like a bee cast, but it's not specifically a particular topic. It's just an idea. I'm going to experiment with it. And you also will notice I got like a bar of coffee, as I said, I was going to buy. And I bought an orange juice. They don't have it fresh from the machine anymore. Um, so here, anyway, some McDonald's from you. And um, and I bought a, a Diet Coke only because, well, um, I like the, I like the, I like the soda a little bit too. So now we also know that um, the live shows. On a welcome to my world, have been doing well. No, I haven't heard any more from YouTube after I erased all the old copyright content that got us in the heap of trouble. But um, I wonder if. By the way, the funny thing I noticed about this orange juice versus the orange juice from um, Cumberland Farms is that this has in it um, not only vitamin A, the other one has vitamin A too, but this also has calcium that was added to it. It has uh, potassium. It has uh, vitamin C, it has thiamine, it has niacin, 
It has, I can't really read that, BT something, vitamin C, okay, let's see, folic acid and magnesium. So this here is way healthier than the stuff that they're selling at CBS, I mean Cumberland Farms, which is their same idea of orange juice from concentrate. And so, um, to say that McDonald's food is necessarily always bad for you is totally not correct. There is a benefit. Number one, I walk here, as I saw earlier. That's the side of the building that I walk past. I walk here. I don't have a car. So because I don't drive, I use calories to come here to eat breakfast or lunch. Use your one meal. I don't need to. Um, I know I paid extra because I bought a soda and the orange juice along with the coffee. But you know what? That's fine. Because I actually really wanted to have um, a nice, generally healthy breakfast. I'm going to get some more Diet Coke in a little bit, but anyway. So, the Welcome to My World videos are doing good. They are reaching out to some new people. People actually are enjoying them. And I'm glad to see that, that people are actually having a good time with them. Because the videos are important. They are how I can speak to you. Now, let's explain the the channel layout for, again, just you don't understand. There's three YouTube channels I currently run. My personal YouTube channel, which is kind of, yeah, yeah it's kind of okay. But it's not really much content on it. Any new content because with the live streaming blocking, I can't really do anything with it. This channel called Welcome to My World, originally I created specifically to highlight my cable, my cable TV programming. And um, it's it has been sitting dormant for a long time. At least five years. Um, the I didn't get everything uploaded to Book in My World. I did on my cable show. But I do want to try to get some new stuff on Book in My World. Because it's called Book in My World. And if you watched the show, you would understand what Book in My World is. Okay? It's my daily activities in life, my views and daily things I see in life, and things like that. And then, of course, we have the North American Snow Queen channel. The North American Snow Queen channel is probably not going to be very busy. It's specifically focusing on uh, my weather responsibilities, weather reports, winter comes. So we're going to be covering more winter stuff. Um, primarily weather. Um, the other thing is too, is this channel can also start covering uh, things like my opinions on the subject. Now, like I watched Critical Unity this morning. Um, pointing out some of the things that YouTube is doing is stupid. Oh yeah, bro, I can tell you, it's stupid. YouTube is is um is going to destroy itself pretty quick because YouTube still thinks that. It's still the top social media platform, and they still determine that they can dictate policy. And they can, but the problem is, is that if people feel there's a better alternative, and there are some, they're going to go elsewhere. Even Donald Trump is going to Twitch for his, for his, um, for his uh, rally. He's going, he's moving his content to Donald Trump. 
on Twitch. Yes, the President of the United States is going to Twitch. Because he realizes that it's for him, his success to his campaign depends almost entirely on the people that watch the show on social media. And he's reaching out to the younger people in the internet, the millennial population. And the millennials has a large portion of a lot of viewers, even on my channel. I also have somebody, of course, Generation Xers. I'm a Generation X person. Okay? But still, the people watch my show. They are in it because it's a, it's they're interested. They they really are. They want to see how I do things, why I do things, and things like that. Which I say to you, congratulations and welcome. Um, but at the same time, I also want to point out to people that my channel is in flux, and it always will be in flux because it's going to continue to change. It's going to grow. It's going to. It's going to morph. Um, that's that's the policy. Some things are going to grow. Some things are going to wither. That's just how it all works. You got to just accept that. You're not going to be able to uh, bat a thousand one hundred percent of the time. You might bat a thousand, maybe. Maybe about realistically about seventy percent, but then the other times you're just like you, you barely just make it um, less than a nine hundred bat nine hundred batting average or whatever how that works. Okay, the point is is that that's the, that's the nature of media. It's going to change. It's going to alter. It's going to it's going to become. Um, very much like that. So you have to take it with a grain of salt. It's not going to be any better or any worse than anyone else's show. If you can get your audience to engage, that's where the live streams really do excel. Is that you guys can see the show. You, you can get engaged with me. You can engage with me in the conversation, of course, too. Um, now, by the way, next topic, of course, is um, in a couple of weeks, the renter's rebate is supposed to be here. And I'm still not sure um, what I'm going to be buying because I had a, an idea that said to myself, is, you know, the way your computer is, you need to have a backup strategy. The DLT tapes are great, but the problem is, is one, that computer doesn't have a SCSI card, so you can't use DLT tapes strictly with it. Number two, even if you did have a SCSI card with it, um, the 40 gigabyte uncompressed, 80 gigabyte compressed DLT4 tape isn't going to hold enough, especially when your computer's got... Um, two and a half terabytes of hard drive storage. You're going to need more space than you have. Tapes. It is, look at this out. If you have, on the average, 40 tapes, okay, it's pretty an interesting number, right? 40 tapes, this is pretty close to what we take. 40 tapes at 40 gigabytes each. That's 1.6 terabytes native compression, layout compression. 1.6 terabytes. That's a lot of tape cartridges. <laughs> You're going to be swapping them out like crazy. And of course, the DLT4 tape drive is also um, very slow. It's only about 10 megabytes per second. So. I said to myself, is, wouldn't it make sense to go ahead and go with something new like an LTO tape drive? And I found a couple. Uh, but the problem is, uh, I still have my SCSI card. I still have to find a compatible driver that works with it. And depending on how many you work with, you might find yourself 
dealing with a lot of layers of extra hardware and extra stuff. How lovely, right? Um, I downloaded the IO SCSI tape driver again, the source code, and attempted to compile it, only to find to my dismay that it doesn't compile. And I'm thinking it's because one of the library calls, or one of the um, uh, error defines is not actually being in the um, header file. Oh, I have the original one that compiled for the Power Mac. So, what I could do is let me go look at that header file and run a diff file on that one versus the other header file and see if the header file was actually fixed. I think I, I, think I did add the error code to it. Um, if not, I can define it as an integer. Um, and that should take care of it. And then I can try to compile it. Now, thank God I'm an Apple developer because one of the things with the new Mac system is you have to sign your binaries. Your binaries need to be signed or they will not work. So every single binary you now create has to be signed with your Apple developer credentials. Fortunately, I have Apple developer credentials, which is free. It's easy to get. It's not, it doesn't even cost any money. But if you don't sign your binaries, they will not be loaded by an operating system, no matter how many ways you pray to the gods above. Maybe under the um, Snow Leopard, they will run fine. But we're talking about running with El Capitan and Sierra and High Sierra. So for that reason, we need to make sure that we properly sign the, the kernel extension in the binary or it's not going to work. Okay? No signature, no working. And uh, you'll have to come up with a better solution. But right now, I'd love to see if anybody has produced a driver. IBM has something... Uh, for the LTO tape drives for the LTFS, but it says right up front, it does not actually include the SCSI driver. <laughs> so it doesn't have the SCSI driver. So you might be saying, well, why don't you just run Linux and just back up with Linux? Yeah, I can do that. But I wanted to back immediately from Mac, without well, on a Mac, running Mac OS. Not having to go into another operating system just to back up my hard drive. If I do that, I can I can do the same thing from the Power Mac G5. Um, I can mount the um, the uh, partitions of my macro on my Power Mac G5. Load in the iOS uh, SCSI tape driver into it. Run the tar program. Tar up my archives. And we'd be all set to go, theoretically speaking. <laughs> but I don't know. It's not really that fun. Then we see the laptop, right? It's for like 160. Just say 160. I've seen them more expensive. I've seen them less. Uh, but the problem is, is until YouTube fixes my account so I can live stream from my main account, streaming from my laptop would be a bit of an annoyance. Not a showstopper, but an annoyance. And the, the, Mac, the MacBook I'm going to buy is an Intel Core 2 Duo machine, which means that it's going to suck. <laughs> Looks cute, but it's gonna suck. All right, back. It's just a back to life. Okay, you see, pick. I can go with the 2015 model. Aluminium MacBook. More expensive. Uh, many of them have an i5 processor, so they're not gonna suck as bad. Um, but. It's an idea. Um, when we talked about, even though know, Skynet sending me a card, I'm actually going to try his card first. Um, I'm trying some of the 
video yeah, games out there, so like World of Warcraft and a few others, which I'm interested in trying. And we also yeah, talked about something I definitely want to do, and that is I want to register some of the shareware I have. Um, and one of the programs I have is called Clean My Mac. Clean My Mac is actually a really neat program because what it does is it'll go through your system and it'll look for any junk and crap and stuff that has been um, sitting around, just taking up space, like um, abandoned program files, log files, and other things. And that alone will help speed up the things and will help out with registry errors if there is anything it's with the um, Apple um, files that have to deal with associated programs regarding uh, extensions and uh, the older Apple um, dual fork system files that still exist in some people's computers. I know I have a few. Um, so the whole clean up all that stuff. And that's really not that expensive. Um, they're even offering things like, I think they offer even a, a monthly subscription. No, I'm not going with a subscription for that. No, honey, when I buy a program, I buy the program for life. Because I know it costs more, but really, you got to be kidding me if you don't want me to buy a program and then every month or every year or whatever pay you a continual use license. Uh, I understand your point of view that is additional money that you make each year. But for people who are on fixed incomes, throwing money around like that is not necessarily an option. I do want to register Tunnel Bear. I want to actually get a yearly subscription to Tunnel Bear. That I will do. Um, I would have to do that up front, pay the, what was this, like $100 or something a year, something like that. And then I'll get a, a year subscription on Tunnel Bear. And lastly, but not leastly, is to make sure that nobody basically um, charges I may have to my subscription charging me at the worst time. I'm going to go pick up some, pre, um, some credit card numbers from privacy.com, allowing me to specifically make sure that I can put exactly how much money I want to spend for purchases and subscription into a privacy.com card code. Thus, just like a prepaid card, be it something like the Western Union card or a green dot card, I will always know exactly how much money I have available to me. Speaking of that, I happen to have um, a Western Union card. The only thing is I'm really confused about is, is this. Is this crystal good or not? You know why I say that? Because the reason I say that is I occasionally get a message or letter in the mail telling me that I need to upgrade my Western Union account and they also need a card. And that doesn't make any sense that it's just something that Western Union's been doing. Green Dot, I used to have a Green Dot card too. So the problem with the green dot card is it's going to take a couple of weeks to actually get the card mailed to me. Whereas with this privacy.com, I can actually put money in it from my PayPal account, which means that I don't have to worry about no go have to go in and and take money out of my checking account or savings account. I can do that too. Uh, which, when I get my rent rebate, it's exactly what's going to happen because the rent rebate is going to be deposited into my bank, my bank as, a, as a check. And once it clears from the state of Connecticut controller's or comptroller's office, then I'm going to be able to, as I said, take <laughs> $350 of it out. Put it into a privacy.com code, com card code, and use it to pay for my um, carbon copy cloner program, which I use a lot. My uh, Clean My Mac program, which I also used a lot when it was running with Snow Leopard, and it worked out fine. 
And lastly, but not leastly, is I do want to consider getting a subscription to Tunnel Bear so that I won't have to worry about writing out of VPN when I most need it. Remember, when you're at a sit, when you're at a public place with public Wi-Fi, such as McDonald's or any other restaurant, unless they give you security code, your whole stream is unprotected. Now that's important because without that protection, you can actually anybody who's supposed to be sitting around. At the next table with their computer and they're sniffing the packets going to and from the Wi-Fi in promiscuous mode, i.e. nosy mode, um, well, as long as you have a 256-bit AES encryption between you and Tunnel Bear, or even a pretty good privacy VPN or one of the others, they can't actually see what you're doing. TLS sockets are good, but TLS sockets don't necessarily encrypt everything. The information that you may be transmitting to your uh, applications online that are not necessarily being encrypted by TLS sockets, such as your address or your phone number or even your email address. So with this information, you can be protected from the bad guys. And really, it's not that expensive. Twenty dollars a year. Oh, yes, or twenty dollars a month. Did I also begin restreaming my own? If it was ever restreaming my own, we would never have even been able to get as far as we're getting now. Restream IO has made it possible for me to stream not just on YouTube, but on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. That's an asset. That's an asset. You're going to want to keep that asset. It's going to make it possible for you to go and do great things. Something to think about. All right, guys. Um, I think for now, I'm going to thank you all for watching this. Oh, and when is the new gas station opening up? I don't know yet. I, I, it looks like they're doing the interior now, like putting up the sheetrock and, and setting up the finished carpentry. So maybe in a couple months, maybe, maybe at the end of October, maybe November. That's just my guess. But for now, that's it, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>